And I want to bring in our panel now of legal experts to break down what we've heard so far. Pleasure to have with us today Christina Bob, attorney and advisor for Donald Trump at Save America, and also Thane Rosenbaum, the columnist at the American Spectator and Attorney. Um, I'd like to set the table just first so if people have just heard some of the arguments here, Christina, because what's at issue here, you know, what started with Jonathan Mitchell, who's the Trump attorney, then it went to the ballot challenger attorney, Jason Murray, is uh, who gets to decide? Is it the state like Colorado? And part of that was about the authority, uh, which, which authority has it. And it seemed at the beginning the judges were really skeptical, Christina, that one state, Colorado, could make a decision like this and it would apply to the entire nation. Uh, Amy Coney Barrett saying it just doesn't seem like a state call. What do you deduct from, from that original argument there where it, it did seem to go in Trump's favor here? Right. Um, well, I think it's really interesting that they have dug in as deep as they have on that issue. I would say the the crux of the argument or the earlier argument that um, Jonathan Mitchell didn't really actually have a lot of time to dig into is whether this even applies to the president at all. Uh, Justice uh, Brown Jackson actually had a great argument in, in favor of Donald Trump to say that Section 3 doesn't even apply to the president at all, but they haven't really honed in on that. As you mentioned, they hone in on basically a state's rights issue. And it's been the left-leaning judges that have really tried to um, ask questions indicating that they might think that this is a state's rights issue, which uh, is really surprising because that's normally a conservative position to take. Um, that was surprising. I, I, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't think it's gonna uh, gonna be their ultimate conclusion, but it, it's interesting that that's the direction that they're taking this. Right. It was about after an hour where it even came up, yeah. Katanji Brown Jackson, because we were sort of in the weeds there. And then as we come back, and it does sort of bear the the question. And I'm looking at all of this, and it's fascinating to watch this play out. But when we go back to it, it was one judge in Colorado hearing a case. It was a bench trial. There was no jury. Where Trump has never even been charged with an insurrection. So there's no. Due process. There's so many questions about how we even got here. Clearly, we are here. And we were just listening into the Solicitor General, Shannon Stevenson, who is representing the Secretary of State there. But if it comes back to he's being kicked off the ballot because he's an insurrectionist, but he's never been charged with an insurrectionist, it seems like a foregone conclusion. There's no way the Supreme Court can't rule in Trump's favor. But some are saying, will it be a unanimous ruling? Yeah, I think that's right. I, I, you know, I've come on your show several times saying I, I thought this was going to be a unanimous ruling, and I think it should be a unanimous ruling. Um, based on some of the questions, it's hard to tell. You know, the whole point of an oral argument is to argue out the points and, and hash them out. So I think that's what the justices are doing. Um, so it's hard to judge if they're actually leaning one way or the other or if they're just hashing out their own argument. But mm -hmm. um, I, I still think it should be a unanimous ruling. Uh, but, you know, it might not be. I don't know. Well, you know, a lot of people are looking at what's happening here and saying, well, you know, let the voters decide as well. Like, why are we deciding yeah. someone's disqualified even before they have been uh, put, in, using put in place pool. here? I'd like, love to get your take, though, on, you know, we're expecting to hear from President Trump as well, former President Trump, before he heads to Nevada today. Uh, obviously, a, a lot of folks are looking at this and saying, well, that he's he's facing this. He's facing, you know, the civil fraud case in New York and, and uh, you know, the lawfare that's been going on on. If this does not go his way, it opens up so many other pathways, Christina. How do you think that uh, the president is feeling today as we watch such a historic day and knowing how much hangs in the balance for him and the future of this election? Yeah, I think it only makes him more determined. You know, Donald Trump is one of uh, the most passionate, uh, resolved people I've personally had the privilege to know. And I think he looks at what's going on and it just makes him more determined than ever to to correct the wrongs that are happening in our country. And he has these historic wins. You look at his campaign. His campaign is high and fly, flying high. The American people love him. He's growing in support day by day. And that is so encouraging. And, and he sees that as confirmation that the American people support him, despite what Jack Smith and all of these others now, you know, the Colorado uh, Supreme Court, what they're throwing at him. He looks at him and he looks at all of this situation and says, OK, the American people are behind me. I'm doing this for the American people, so I'm going to keep going. Thank you for that insight. Uh, obviously, you know the president very well. I would